is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Salarpuria Sattva, Trust, It's What We Build, presents the Realty Debate powered by Reliance Home Finance with Manisha Natarajan. The year 2016 has been notable in Indian real estate for one thing, judicial activism in the industry. There have been several judicial rulings against developers, some of the big defaulting developers like Unitech, Supertech, JP and Parsavna to be precise. On today's Realty Debate, we are asking the question, are these really helping the distressed home buyers, the judicial orders, and the home buyers who have invested their life savings to buy a flat and have no sight of it many years later? Or are these simply emotional victories which have little bearing with the stark reality that developers simply have no money to complete projects, the projects, the monies collected have been diverted elsewhere? We are joined by Dhanendra Kumar, former Chairman, Competition Commission of India, CCI, O Mahuja, CEO, Residential Brigade Group, Deepesh Salgya, Director, Shapurji Palanji Real Estate, Pavan Sri Agarwal, Advocate, Supreme Court of India, Lawyer for Unitech Vistas Buyers, and Ravindra Seni, Secretary, Federation of Apartment Owners Association. Also joining us on our 3G will be Rajiv Talwar, CEO, DLF, and Chairman, Naredko. All right, so lot of ground to cover, but let me start with that peculiar Unitech case where both Unitech and the buyers said that they'd actually had a very, very positive outcome. 67 projects of Unitech where Delhi High Court granted an opportunity to the company, that's Unitech, to complete its delayed and pending projects by opening up of escrow accounts and using the money deposited in it solely for these projects. The company told the court that they would open escrow accounts in which amounts received from the buyers and sale of lands would be deposited and the money would be used solely for completing the delayed projects. Unitech claimed that it requires 2700 crore rupees to complete its 41 pending projects while the receivables from the customers were about 4000 crores. More than 40 cases are pending against Unitech in the Delhi High Court and 929 cases are still pending with NCDRC against Unitech. Pavan, I'm going to come to you first. What really happened? After that case, you had the buyers saying, oh, fantastic, it's been a big victory for us. Stock markets next day said it's a big victory for Unitech. That's exactly what they wanted. Developers from Kridai, you know, off the record told me, oh, this is fantastic outcome for Unitech because they got away scot-free. They would have never been able to, if the courts had ruled that they had to return the buyer's money, that would have never been honoured. So, so what really happened in this case? Now, uh, the Delhi High Court judgment actually, uh, it seems, has overlooked a very important and crucial thing, which is that out of so many projects, there are a lot of projects where the buyers have already paid 95% and more which is the balance is only required to be paid at the time of possession. Mm -hmm. Now, that being the situation, uh, the calculations with regard to more money being coming from the buyers, in a situation where buyer do not have a trust, mm -hmm. maximum of them and most of them do not have the trust, in this situation, uh, investing more money with Unitech, having a, uh, the background that they are not in a position to complete the project is something which, which is which is hard to digest, Pavan. Hard to digest. What's going on? They they hire all these big, big lawyers, famous lawyers uh, like Mr. Sibyl and literally like a lot of people think they got away scot-free. So, okay. they're supposed to sell land. Yeah. They're supposed to, the buyers are supposed to pay money for projects which have been stuck for seven years, eight years, nine years with no visibility. Some projects where 90% of the money has been collected, buyers really don't have so much to give. And yet now the courts have ruled saying that, Correct. hello, you have to put the money in put an escrow account and the developer will complete the project. Ravindra ji, you think that Unitech will complete. What are the buyers feeling? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, uh, every, every time, whenever there's a court order, it is in uh, both both side of uh, the things are there. Like uh, we'll have to deposit in this uh, in, in a uh, like account where we don't have any assurance like this will complete or not. Uh, in a similar case, like we just got a, ju a judgment from NCDRC recently for service tax uh, mm -hmm. uh, reimbursement. 
but sir ncdrc told by like a developer to go to the service tax department as by a developer said i have deposited all the money in service tax department which i collected from the buyers and uh, finally the ncdrc told him like uh, just give us a detail what what uh, service tax you are deposited there and uh, they had no details no they had no details they had no details so they hold your thought mr jain just hold your thought Mr. Dhanendra Kumar, come in here. What I'm seeing is like there are lots of cases we'll go through, uh, and uh, you know, in Parsavnath case, there's been uh, a ruling that 12% interest has to be paid, and the principal amount has been has to be returned. Parsavnath is claiming that we don't have the money left. I mean, where are we going to return? In Supertech case, where the approvals had have been given. Uh, by Noida authority, the courts have come down very hard on Supertech, saying we don't care whether you die, but you have to return the buyer's money. What I'm seeing is a lot of inconsistencies in these judgments, sir. What's what's the outcome? Who are these judgments helping? Let me first make a few general observations. Uh, well, this is a sector, and we are at a stage mm -hmm. when there is no victor and there is no vanquished. Okay. Na koi isme harne wala hai, na koi jeetne wala hai. We have somehow inherited. Uh, a legacy when there is a complete lack of trust. The consumers don't trust the builders at all. And somehow, over a period of time, they have lost this trust. The agreements have been completely one sided, and the buyers have been taken for a ride all this time. There have been no completion of projects within the stipulated time, even after several years. In fact, uh, I'm reminded of what somebody told me. मेरे महबूब ने वादा किया था पांचवें दिन का किसी ने कह दिया होगा कि दुनिया चार दिन की है सो नथिंग इज कम्प्लीटेड यू गिव दम एक्सटेंशन टू ईयर्स पीपल थिंक दैट नथिंग वुड बी कम्प्लीटेड सो क्वेश्चन इज दैट हाउ डू पीपल पे द मनी इवन इफ दे आर रिक्वायर्ड टू पे और इवन इफ द हाई कोर्ट ऑर्डर और विच एवर अंडर सम स्कीम ऑफ थिंग्स दे टेल दम ओके इफ यू पे दैम देन यू विल The point is that we have to rebuild this uh, trust. Now, coming back to the cases which you mentioned, yes, you are right. Uh, for the first time in the last one year or so, we have noticed there is a reversal, there is a change in the ecosystem, and the courts have also become very active and they have taken uh, cognizance of the situation. I am reminded of my days as chairman of the Competition Commission of India. when this uh, famous dlf case came before us but in that case because the commission held uh, dlf to be dominant in the uh, defined uh, market and defined geographical uh, area so they held them uh, delinquent and imposed certain penalties and the uh, buyers could uh, thereafter get some relief or hopefully they should be getting a relief soon but the point is that unless a uh, builder or a party is dominant in the definition of competition commission of india cci couldn't do anything but rightly so thereafter they went to the consumer courts and consumer courts have been taking cognizance and may 2016 for the first time the national consumer redressal forum in the in the jp case in the kelpsco uh, project they took cognizance and they passed a very historic landmark judgment against jp and then soon thereafter one after another in july and september august we had a flurry of judgments coming 12% 18% uh, penal interest, interest and so on right whatever it is and i completely agree with those judgments because as we know that uh, even the agreements if uh, uh, agreements are one sided in this manner and there is the famous term of contra pro forentum and the courts have to intervene Court, courts, courts there's no other option okay what uh, i'm going to get rajiv talwar to come in here mr talwar the question that we are asking is that there seems to be tremendous judicial activism and the Agreed. courts suddenly seem to have aligned with the consumer and the buyer who stuck with delayed projects and some cases are quite obvious i mean we all know the jp is in trouble we all know that parts yeah. of nath is not going to be able to complete their projects neither will a unitex so without naming any company because you all work in the same industry tell me i mean i are you are you happy that courts are coming to the rescue of the buyer now that's that's the only way to go forward uh, first of all let me share an observation with you 
that the first priority for any builder or developer should be to complete commitments to the buyers. Mm -hmm. I think that should be a given and whenever any court pronounces any judgment in the to the best of its understanding, I think that should be the common denominator that please complete your commitments to the buyers. If they do not have money, I think every builder in this nation would have plenty of land which they may have taken from the government right. and to that extent I would contradict Mr. Dhanendra Kumar who very happily said that he is most happy with the judgments. I don't think being so senior in the government, having been one of the architects of proliferation of urbanization in the state of Haryana, the government can wash its hands off. Whether it be Haryana, whether it be UP, whether it be any other state in India, mm -hmm. there have been plenty of lands given to the government where projects have not come up. There has been a down cycle and I think the government should stand up to it that yes, all the money collected from builders should be put into an escrow account for those projects which have not even taken off. That money be returned only to complete all the projects launched, all the places where money has been taken and the flats or apartments which were promised to the buyers should be given in the shortest time possible. Having okay, so Mr. Talwar, I'm I hearing what you're saying many, is that forget compensation and refunds. Which, what the courts need to do is really come out with judgments which go towards completion of projects. So, so then let's come to the specific of Unitech project because this is the most curious example of what's happened. The courts have actually cited Unitech and said, all right, open an escrow account. Unitech has promised they will sell land. Unitech has said, let the buyers pay the rest of the money and let a buyer representation be there and we will complete the projects. Tell me how is the buyer going to trust that? There are projects where 90% of the money has been paid. Where else will the money come from? I mean, wh what happened to that money? It's not all downturn. I think you're absolutely correct. The mathematics doesn't add up. If 90% of the money has been taken and there are lands which are owned by the company, then I think the company needs to put money into an escrow account, not the buyers. And it may be any company today. Mm -hmm. if, there is, if there is a possibility of generating funds either by the company or by the government taking the land back and putting that money into the escrow account, I think the first responsibility to win over the trust of the buyers is to say that yes, let's complete the project and give delivery to the buyers. I think they've put in some hard-earned money and I think the court judgment would apply only to those projects where maybe 20-25% of the money has been taken, there is a launched project and there is rest of the money to come in, that goes into an escrow account like the Real Estate Regulation Authority bill says and the right. Act says that yes, let the money be put in, let the project be completed and let the apartment be handed over to the buyer. Uh, okay, so I think fair we are talking All right, Let, let's get, let's give I would like to respond to what one Rajiv said. One where 90% of the money has finished. been taken, one where it is not. Okay, quickly Mr. Uh, very short and concise sir, so that we can get other speakers also to come in. Go ahead sir. Mr. Dhanayans Kumar. No, I just wanted to first of all mention Rajiv, what he said earlier was only partly true. I don't subscribe to the theory that governments can wash off their hands at this moment having licensed those builders. When they license those builders, there are certain terms and conditions. Governments yes. have not fulfilled their responsibility to oversee those terms and conditions. Mm. All the state governments, so their uh, town and country planning departments and so on, they should have been more alert and conscious to watch the interest of the, uh, the, the buyers, also to make sure Correct. that their uh, building plans, etc. Secondly, I would also like to say what you said rightly so in the end that uh, uh, the escrow account, the money has to go not from the government, it would have to go from the builders. Builder. Not they have collected the, buyer, the money, 90% the money they have taken. The builder is saying, I have been delayed for 9 years, 7 years, why are you asking me so, for more money? Sell your land, 
complete my project i'm happy to pay you i've been sitting on a rented accommodation while you've not completed my project that's and the it, third thing it. just just to complete since you mentioned would be that lot of work can be done now for by the state government in creation of these rera real estate regulatory authorities also by associations like yours of which you are the chairman the the nardeco and many others they are very respected very reputed associations they can also undertake monitoring of their members that they abide by the rules and regulations appropriately all is not lost real estate sector is a very important sector of economy the construction of the real estate where according to the world bank's ease of doing business we rank very low so i think all of us have to work together as i said this is a sector in which there are no victors and there are no vanquished, vanquished. so we have to right work now, together right now everybody seems to be on the no. losing side isn't Correct. it oh mauja here you have a situation it might be a north india related problem but there is i mean we today on our south show uh, did a story on marg properties in chennai haven't delivered to their uh, buyers for for a really long time so there are small pockets even in south india even in the most more uh, let's say professional markets where delivery problems have been an issue maybe not to the large extent that we've had in north india so so tell me how are we going to restore the confidence is our court rulings and court activism the way for buyers to come back into the market I think Manisha, this this challenge is not only restricted to some parts of the country; it's also prevalent in MMR region, Mumbai metropolitan region. And we've seen this confidence of the home buyer being shaken up in NCR and MMR to a small extent in Chennai. I think the only way to overcome this whole situation is there are two ways. One is basically our regulatory bill or the regulatory authority has to be brought in very fast and more empowered. And mm -hmm. the second part is like you have in the bonds and stock market, you have a rating agency. which basically helps a home buyer to understand which company is going to deliver which project is going to be delivered have a rating agency in place to help a home buyer to easily understand this process lot of home buyers look at which financial institutions have approved this project they blindly go with it and eventually they understand it was only financial viability that was approved by the bank not to the project viability you know om ahuja the entire lehman crisis has showed you that even global rating agencies can't be trusted so so no putting another layer of rating agencies i'm not i'm 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 going to be like putting a question mark to that but yes it's another layer of check crystal does have but it's only rating a few projects dipesh salga because om ahuja mentioned your market mmr has of course its own let's say bad eggs in the basket uh, i'm not going to name them because everyone knows them we've been carrying those stories and trying to help the buyers uh, reach out to to those uh, developers as well but tell me i mean as a new player who's got huge ambitions in the real estate market you're hitting the market at a time when it's at it's where there's a complete crisis in terms of confidence what will restore it Uh, <clears throat> see i have a slightly uh, a larger issue to address firstly mm. you know uh, this uh, uh, process of approaching courts is fine i fully uh, have full emotions with the customers who have suffered i have sympathy but at a larger level a judicial solution always has a limitation mm. because courts are limited by by ultimately giving some financial penalties what customers want is homes absolutely Now, we have to find the solutions how can they get homes mm -hmm. so instead of a penal based system that a uh, that a maximum courts can do uh, can we improve the ecosystem can we make a, make a stronger ecosystem and a more efficient process uh, can we uh, implant more efficient processing systems in place so that the developer is in a position to deliver in time okay so how do we ensure that as a ecosystem is i think more important than you know finding you change the law make it more more penalties because that's only deterrent Absolutely. A deterrent can only, a deterrent can only, you know, uh, in case of risk, in case of default defaulters, it you know, cannot ensure delivery in you, time. You've actually said something which is so critical that look, okay, here you have a list of ten, twelve developers, and I'm going to only look at the big, large developers who have definitely defaulted by will. They've siphoned off money and they've defaulted by will. But there are so many projects, and I have, I mean, if I look at this data, this is astounding. over 50% of uh, flat buyers won't get their 
flats this year in 2016 as promised across India's top seven cities only 180,000 apartments were completed by June 2016 against 675,000 promised. So imagine only 20% were completed. So, so even the best of developers are having a problem with the system. So that there is a huge responsibility of the system. Now look at this super tech case. How easily we bash the developer and completely let the authority or Noida authorities go scot-free. Supreme Court directed Supertech to pay 10% of invested money per annum as investment returns to 14 people who booked houses in its Noida Twin Tower projects. When Supertech said, look, it's going to sink, it's going to die, Supreme Court said, we don't care whether you sink or die, we are not concerned. Pavan, what's going on? I mean, Noida Authority, let's cut free. Here, obviously, the approvals were given. That's the reason why so many flows have come up. So, so how do we fix right. this system? I mean, here, there's a travesty of justice too. You are right. Uh, in that sense, that authorities do have to come now forward, and they have to fix. We have to fix a responsibility as to who are the persons who actually uh, give approvals to the project, and then what ultimately has to be done with them. Because uh, it's, it's not only the developers; the ultimate sufferers are also the flat buyers because of this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, keeping uh, both both uh, parties' interest. In that sense, it is the uh, the person, the real culprit needs to be understood that why and in how, what manner they have approved. If they have approved, then whether that approval was right and how it was done, whether uh, in which manner it has been uh, So, Pavan, here's my question. Would you agree then in all court cases, right? right. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know if judges right. are going to watch this show, but lawyers such as you who are fighting for the buyers, right. should the effort of the courts be and the buyers be to get the projects completed, to, oh, to work right. in a way that the projects are somehow, the judgments are to get the projects completed. No, you are right. The attempt of the NCDRC initially and in, in most of the cases has been that first uh, you give the project, you de deliver the project, you give the possession of the flats to the home buyers. That was the first attempt. Even we, if we take the example of the Vistas, they, the first attempt which was made by the flat buyers, you please give me the project because you want to live in my houses. We want my flat. They didn't want it, the money in, in that sense, you refund my money and that will solve my problem. So therefore, the first stance before the, before the NCDRC and that the order was... That please, you first complete. Yeah, when, please when your complete. project does not get completed, you have no choice but to say return my money. Correct. Isn't so it? that is why. It is not that they gave an undertaking before the NCDRC. They repeated it before the Supreme Court that we will complete the project. They violated that. Mm. It is that in that situation that this order was tempted because the buyer says, that, now where we have to go? We have to get our money back if, if they are not delivering the projects. It will go on for four years. We will go on paying Where rent, etc. Yeah. So this situation was was in that scenario. The attempt was not of the court at the initial point of time to simply say refund the money. Okay. The Fair attempt enough. was the attempt was first to please deliver the project. We wanted our, pro, uh, our flats. We want to live in our flats because that is what our hard earned money for. We okay. didn't want it to commercialize it. Okay. We wanted we to live it. Live in it. So Rajiv. Uh, uh, Last comment from you and then I'm going to get to Mr. Kumar as well. Uh, what happens in cases where, there, where you know that there is no money with the developer? I mean, you know, so there is land, the developer saying I'm not able to sell that land. What That's do the what courts do? I, I mean, what is the kind of solution <clears throat> which bodies like yours, like Naredko and Kradai should be thinking of? Yes, um, Manisha, in fact, that is what we've also come out with a published pa paper on stressed assets. I am again repeating because I don't think you caught on the point the first time I made, okay. which was that where has the money gone? Mm -hmm. Many a time this money has gone into buying land, maybe from private sources, but many a time from government sources. Okay. Now, if those projects have not taken off where money has been paid to the government. I think the first thing should be done is to take the land back and the money which was given to the government should be placed into an escrow account and the builder made to complete all the commitments to buyers because the builder should have no excuse that sorry, I've not been able to raise money. And that was my intention that yes, 
there are very often lands purchased from the government or its agencies in many many states and that land should be taken back if not utilized money returned to the builder but into an escrow account to complete designated projects which have been sold to buyers where majority of the money has been taken yeah, from the buyers but like the projects have not been completed uh, so the Rajin, first it sounds like a fantastic solution where will state governments return money i mean look at haryana who doesn't have enough money to complete roads they are saying we are bankrupt so you know it's going to be a very hard solution i i really think that it's it's a it's a good solution but if you no, if no, and i would i would no, really i, I would Manisha, really want to correct. see why I does it think i don't think please go ahead rajiv just a minute manisha just a minute i don't think governments union or state or authorities can ever take the plea that we have no money if you are justified for the government then i think you'll have to hear many many such replies from various companies there are projects the value of land will always go up it was it will always be auctioned again and i think courts have adopted such solutions even before i think the the government agencies need to take the land back why are you leaving land with the companies if they can't even complete their existing projects okay so it just like I, an ssc said just like a reliance ssc said which was taken back because that, yes. be mm -hmm. okay i get that point you're saying the government should reclaim the land all right uh, go ahead sir mr deepesh what you want to make a point very yes. quickly though yeah see if you see the biggest problem is in ncr region mm -hmm. one secondly this problem was never so big in the past so we have real estate for so many years in india is the first time the problem is of so much big magnitude and i know we can argue that the issue is with approvals and so many other issues but one point everyone is missing is the biggest crash in prices is in ncr region mm -hmm. so it's not the money has gone the value has gone okay. when the value has gone there is no incentive for developer to complete the project mm. your people bought it 5000 rupees today the price is 3500 rupees so actually there is no no value left in in the project now so there is no We, uh, no incentive for the developer to complete the project because ultimately he's going to make a loss absolutely so i think uh, i think the problem is basically all our laws and our systems are made for a rising real estate market we probably never anticipated that prices could come down i so think i think the solution you yes, have so really just really mr yeah, deepesh salgia put the <laughs> brought the center question center let's say argument to this entire debate highlighted that big reason why developers and many of them are not completing their projects there is no incentive left land was a trading asset for most of them now they're not able to sell the land because they're not able to recover value look at unit again jp collectively the amount of land that they have together i mean there's this huge amount of land okay Okay, one second. Let me complete it. Right. Now, yeah. the, the value of the solution. Okay, to it. one second. So what I what is what what I suggest is that mm -hmm. you know you have to take inspiration from stock market. You know, when you buy or trade security in the uh, stock market or do an IPO, there could be loss. Fine, there could be delivery problem. But all stock exchanges have a system where they insure the investor. So a small amount of every transaction goes to investor protection fund. Mm -hmm. You know, so if entire India, you could put a point one percent or small amount. and that goes in an investor protection fund so in case of eventuality that money like acts like an insurance fund and that can be used to fund stress projects i mean that's one way out in wow. which to de risk entire you india know, I've been and doing probably that for 5 4 years and this is the first time i'm hearing a completely you know off beat sort of a solution which doesn't seem difficult to implement at all all right oma huja you had a point to make but i really like mr salgia's uh, argument here only thing amanisha in the past when the unit trust of india situation happened where a lot of investors lost money on a promise that unit trust will deliver something and they couldn't deliver government of india intervened and they helped investor by bailing them out and at later stage today government of india is sitting on huge amount of cash to en encash those shares and they will only make profit out of it i think what rajiv told is a great solution for current investors who are stuck mm. i think those investors need to be getting a solution 
that is a better way to bail them out. I'm going to wrap out here, gentlemen. There's so much more to be said, but thank you very much for joining me on this very interesting discussion. Yes, courts will be the last bastion for consumers to go to, but then the entire industry and the buyer's attempt must be to get the projects completed and for the buyers or the consumers to get their homes. Mm -hmm.